It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Oh, great. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you felt like you'd like to know another one. <laughs> Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always making your way here. Checking out the series. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. That's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to keep you up to date on your favorite artist and discover some new ones as well. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, or YouTube for the video version. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today my guest, Howard Jones. We're going to be talking about his uh, his album, Dialogue. It's the third album in a planned quadrilogy. Uh, we'll get into the importance of that album title, what it carries in our current environment, and the polarization of our uh, of our society, really. Uh, he'll talk about wanting to write the most optimistic and hopeful song he's ever written, and his naturally hopeful view of the future. Now, Howard's also going to preview his upcoming tour with uh, Midge Ure, and, uh, and looks back at their friendship, as well as the 30th anniversary of his album In the Running, which saw him enter the 90s while uh, moving away from his trademark electronic sound. So let's do this and talk about dialogue. That's a funny line. It's Kyle Meredith with Howard Jones. Hi, Kyle. So here we have uh, dialogue. And, and this. so first we have Engage, Transform, which I absolutely loved, and now Dialogue. Did you always envision this uh, as a trilogy? Um, yeah, well, yes, there's one more. So I, I, I do you call it a quadrilogy? Because there's one more <laughs> after this called Global Citizen. So quadrilogy. Yes, I did, and I, yeah, that's right. And I planned it out. Uh, uh, it was supposed to be a 10 year um, project to do the four albums. And I named them right at the beginning. Um, and yeah, so I never done anything like that before. I thought it would be good to set myself a real plan you know for the next 10 years so um, I'm you know I'm getting there <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's certainly a way to, to to hold your feet to the fire I guess you know when it yeah. comes to, to the, it's, it's interesting though because you know as we arrive at, at dialogue and and so you you thought of it these these words at the beginning these titles but to a certain degree how much does that have to inevitably speak to the moment that it comes out in? Yes, that's right. That's right. So, uh, but I think that because uh, I've chosen such sort of universal titles that it, it, it was open to do that, you know, that, that I could really speak of the, of the, uh, you know, of the time um, with, with, with those big subjects, you know, um, especially like, having just you know gone through pandemic and and people being locked down and and the the deprivation that we've all felt about not being able to be with people and talk with them and chew the cud and discuss things and you know exchange opinions and ideas you know that uh, having been robbed of it it's quite a ripe time to be you know talking about dialogue and how important it is. We're so hardwired for a dialogue um, and, and communication with each other. And when it's taken away, it's like, oh, wow, it's not, you really miss it. <laughs> yeah. it was, it's interesting because, you know, what that, as I, as I was saying, as, you, as you're getting to there too, you know, what that word might have meant um, when, when you thought of all of these versus, because, because you're right, you know, here we are in the pandemic. This is something that you could not have predicted exactly back then. I mean, some people did, but uh, but most of us didn't. And 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 then, you know, I, I thought even that it's sort of what an optimistic word that it, it ends up being at this moment. Because you know, even on, you know, when I, I think of um, where we are in a lot of the world, where we are, especially here in America, you know, just split people are split. Like dialogue seems like a fantasy almost to me. Yeah some days exactly exactly i think that's why it's so 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 important to be you know to be talking about it and for people to be opening up um uh, uh, about how they really feel but also embracing that in others you know like 
you know, differing opinions. We, it seems everything's be, like you're saying, everything's become so polarized. So if, you know, into one camp or the other, uh, rather than trying to find some common ground within that uh, and to, you know, work hard to find that, that, that common ground, it's sort of, it's really crucial that we, that we, that we, we make progress towards that now because of this polarization, it, it's really destructive. And, um, you know, t talking, discussing, trying to understand people's, um, uh, 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 you know, opinions, even, they may, even though they may be like really extreme, like, is there some way we can find a common ground here? And, and, and still, let's just talk about how much we love our children, even that, you know what I mean? Um, so that so that there's as communication going on. as long as there's communication going on and there's you know like I, I went to see Sting recently and he he um, he he played you know I hope the Russians love their children too and and it, and and he opened the show with that and yeah you know because we all you know we all you know love our families let's find something that we that we we have in common so we can build on that you know we're all on this planet, we, you know, we have this common humanity, let's bring it out. And the way we bring it out is by being courageous and having dialogue and not shutting the door on people and saying, I will never speak to you again because you don't agree with me, you know? Right, right. How does that, so how does it have to factor into the songwriting, if at all? Because there you yeah. are, you know, that's how we know it speaks to the moments. But as you're approaching this album, as you approach this album and you know what the theme is, do you have to craft the songs around that? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's it, it's like it's like a sort of thread running through it. I'm thinking of all the different ways that we um, that you can illustrate. Um, I think one of the songs you won't you won't have heard before. So I'm thinking there's a song called "Be the Be the Hero," and it and it goes. It talks about people hiding away um, with the and and you know it feels like they're, they're they're falling apart you know it's close friends you know that you know they're just falling apart and their their lives are just crashing um and and the song's saying you know talk to me please you know talk to me tell me how you're feeling so that i can i can be i can support i mean you know i'm not going to prescribe what you need to do but i can be there with you and support um and and it says um I, you know I feel the silence breaking us apart. And it's like, when we don't communicate, when we don't have dialogue, you know, it, 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 people just fall, uh, fall apart and become apart. And so, yeah, so, so those, you know, those themes are, are running through most of the songs. As you, they're, they're not, it's not entirely obvious all the time, but even, you know, um, I'm trying to think of, that's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manifest it? There's loads of references to it in the song. I, 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 I'm trying. I'm struggling to, to, um, yeah. Well, even know. in the, um, it's optimistic. That I think that's what caught me off guard too. And it's not that you haven't done optimism before, but you know, like I believe in you. There's a whole lot of optimism in that statement. Uh, celebrated together is a whole heap of optimism. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah, with that, yeah, with, with that song, I, I tried to write the most optimistic and hopeful song I've ever written, um, and 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 it's be un, unashamedly, you know, for those like you know, looking to each other's. What I, I was, what was, what was um, hitting me a lot during during the lockdown time was. You know, isn't it amazing to be born as a human being and to be alive and to be able to contemplate the 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 universe and to <laughs> have this amazing mind and brain that we've all got that is capable of doing these incredible things? You're like, we we've got no <laughs> no right to be miserable <laughs> when we've got this ability to see the 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 sky and, and and nature and each other and 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 the amazing achievements of humanity and it's really striking me very hard that um that's a way to keep positive all the time no matter how bad things are uh, get and i know you know we all um are, have struggles from cradle to grave and that we have to solve and get through um and but it, it's 
you know, even the difficult times can be amazing if we look at it the right way. And, and you know, we're alive. You know, we're 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 capable of this incredible stuff. Let's celebrate that. You know. You do say one of the most important things you could say in that song, and it ends up being a callback to one of your most famous songs when you say things could only get better, yes. which which I hope is true, by the way, because. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, you know, we don't know that it's true, but I, I still would stick by it as the best way to go forward, because having a hopeful view of the future and having a hopeful view of the ultimate course of, of human beings on the planet it gives us energy to keep going and to keep making a difference. And, and if we give up on that, then I think that it can only slide. Um, and so having hope running through everything, the, our general way of living um, is a much better way, even if it, the outcome, you know, I mean, who knows what the outcome will be. But if we have hope, then we can, we've definitely got a chance. If we, if we have no hope, there's no right. chance. Well, uh, you know, I'll tie that into one more song too, because uh, who you really want to be. I mean, that that to me that that's the moment of choice as I hear it anyway. I mean, we all yeah. sort of had the chance for a new start post lockdown if, if we wanted to. I, I think people said that at the beginning. I would hope that some people actually did take advantage of that. Yeah, I wrote these these lyrics so recently because I I, I didn't want to write them during lockdown. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> And, and, and it starts, I suppose it starts with actually it's a, having a real go at, at, at people who um, do all that horrible stuff on social media and, 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 you know, they troll people and they say terrible things, but then they're, they're anonymous and they're, mm -hmm. they don't stand up and say who they are. So there's no, it's, it's cowardly and not courageous. And one of the things I really, you know, believe is that I, I think you're entitled to say things if you're right there in the middle of the fight you know sticking your head above the parapet and going i you know war is bad or whatever cause it is you know that so many great causes then and 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 because those people will be attacked you know they you know but and i then then they have they have the right to 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 criticize and and have a view but if you just sit in your room with your computer and just trash everybody, it's just, that's just terrible. You know, I really don't like that at all. Yeah, hell of a way to live. It's just really must be horrific to be that person doing right, that. Right, right. I did mention you doing that little callback uh, in Celebrate Together to Things Can Only Get Better. Is that one of the moments that you lean into? Is, is that a conversation you have with yourself or is that just one of the things that pops up naturally? Yeah, no, that's definitely a conversation that I have. I, I, I think that, you know, that's why, why I practice Buddhism is to try and stay on top of the um, positive negative swing, you know. <laughs> I want to be just swinging to the, towards the positive. And, and it's a battle because they're both equally strong, you know. I think um, that, uh, you know, and the more vigorously you live your life, I think the, the stronger the negative pull will be you know so we've got to always win that battle um almost like moment to moment you know so we don't slide into the sort of negative um world where you know there's no hope and things won't get better you know um so yeah so i'm very much very much dedicated to that well I i'll ask about one more too especially in the uh, in the sample that we got because we you know we're hearing these songs i should bring this up but the album itself uh which i guess was gonna come out relatively soon that's been pushed back though right to later in the year yeah yeah um well what we're planning to do is um release it i, I mean it is going to be available on, on on the tour and i think we're going to sell it through our through our own website you know because the fans will go mad if we don't let it let them get hold of it um, but then it'll be released sort of more generally. And I, I, the, when, I, the, when I say that, I mean, you know, on the streaming services, which is like so important now. It's like huge, isn't it? And um, so that will be September. And then, but we, I mean, we're trying something different. We, we, we're, we're releasing like five singles before the album is, is, re, is really widely available. So that's, that's, quite, that, that's quite interesting because you get feedback straight away. 
on what where people are at at the moment you know what sort of tracks they like and what they don't i mean it's i can't do anything about the album it's done and it's what i do so i i, I can't i can't um um you know sort of steer it in in a different way because i i don't know any other way this is me this is what i do so i hope you like it sort of thing <laughs> I mean, luckily, you're an amazing songwriter. You got that going for you. So a little, little deep breath right there. That's a little sigh. That's, uh, you know, trust in yourself. I, or at least I'll put my faith in you. Uh, as... Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's a very insecure, very insecure place to be, really. You know? Right. Music, you can't even see it, can you? You know, it's like it all takes place inside somebody's consciousness. That's true. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> how do you know how it's going to go down? You never know. <laughs> What's well, you know, I'll, I'll use that as a seg, you know, inside someone's consciousness, because the other song that, you know, I get here early is uh, is my one true love, which is I, I read, you know, comes from a nightmare, comes from a dream that you've been able to kind of pull into something, uh, something else. Um, and and I, I won't speak too much. Why don't you tell the story on that one? Because, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have, you know, you know, quite often woken up um, in, in a from a nightmare and sweating and um you know, really terrified, um, thinking that my dearest, you know, the person closest to me, the, who I who I love most in the world, um, has left me and 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 <laughs> gone. And uh, I was thinking about, and then it's made me think about, you know, when we when we love somebody deeply and truly, we kind of give our heart to them, don't we? To sort of to hold. And we don't know how it's going to go. They may like it at first, but they may reject it later. And it's the sort of you put this trust and faith that that they are going to like it. But you give you you know you you really take the risk. You really absolutely take the risk of, of, of doing it. And I'm I'm point, pointing out that that brings with it this fear of 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 losing it. You know, and um, that. Obviously, that's quite deep in my unconscious that I that that, that I have this fear. Um, but we mustn't just because we do have that. We mustn't stop us giving our heart away if we, you know, because we that's what we're like. We're hardwired to do that as human beings, and you know, to to live a life without loving someone or something or you know a group of people or I don't know whatever it is would be a sad sad thing. Isn't that interesting, the, uh, the parallel there, that as a songwriter, you put your arts in someone else's consciousness, and as someone in love, you put your hearts, yeah. in, you know, it's, it's the letting go, right? Yeah. That's great. It is, it is, it is. And, I, I, and, and in that song, the, the bit about the dialogue is it um, saying, it says, did we forget to stop and listen and hear the space between the words? So, you know, have a real proper dialogue and, and, and conversation together. You know, is that why it, it all went wrong? Because we stopped listening to each other and we and we and, and we just forgot, we just took it for granted and we didn't hear the silent thoughts in between the words, you know. It's beautifully done. It's seriously is so beautifully done. And and you're gonna we, we talked about you're gonna take these on tour. In fact, you're going on tour with uh, with Midger. Which, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. Midge is, I'm so glad he's he's coming out with us. He, he, he he's a he's a really good friend of mine, and I have such respect for him. And uh, as a man, you know, as well as you know, forget the fact that he's a brilliant musician and artist, and made some of the classic work of the '80s and continues to do so. Um, he, he's just a, a, an incredible human being. Um, and it's always great to have friends and people like that around you. And it is obviously not the first time you, you, you all have collaborated before, you all have toured before. I, I think I was reading maybe the first time was around uh, 89. Yeah. So, and so here's the dumb part question part of the interview. Yeah. What's the difference uh, in the backstage between uh, now and, and when you originally toured together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um well we, we it was across that line tour wasn't it wasn't it when we when we we actually toured together i mean i mean we, he's played on my records he also when i did my 25th anniversary he he he, he was a guest on that show and we did 
uh, Vienna together, I think. I think it was, oh, it was amazing. Um, so, oh, no, I'm just trying to think, what's the difference? I mean... Or the good memories. I mean, you know, this is... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think that, you know, I, when I started out, you know, doing this and we, and we supported like big, you know, big bands. And I, I, I always had a bit of a sort of chip on my shoulder about the, you know, the band that was, the, you know, the headline band. And actually I should have been thinking, you should be bloody grateful that they're in favor <laughs> having you to play to their audience. You know, you should, you, you, you should be the grateful one here, not the blooming complaining idiot. And I, and I thought, and I, I, I really have tried, you know, to people who, who, who agree to, you know, to come out on tour with me, I must, I really want to treat them well. And I really want to look after them. And I really want to see them as being precious assets to the whole tour and, and be grateful, you know, to them. So um, this is how I hope it's going to be now, you know, and I mean, I mean, Mitch is going to be on our bus and everything. So it's going to be so great. Oh, that's great. I was going back and listening to some <clears throat> some of the uh, older songs in your catalog, and I landed on the uh, In the Running record. Uh, you know, it's celebrating 30 years this year, and, and Midge is on there, too, as I understand. And, yeah. you know, it's such an interesting part. Falling Away is such a good song. And and when you look back, knowingly moving away from electronics at the time, I don't, you know, yeah. was that a natural progression, distancing yourself from, you know, the era before? Like, what... What led into that record? Because it's a beautiful record. Well, thank you, thank you very much for saying that. I, I, um, I just wanted to uh, experiment all the time, you know, with different things and try and get better at at working with um, non electronic music and working with players and musicians. And you know, it's always been trying to do something. Di you know different even though the fans probably would prefer me just to stick to my <laughs> I, I know that but I think they've got used to me um, you know doing these different things now and because I think what the way I'm viewing it now Kyle is is that I've got these different strands to my work so I try I, I've kind of worked it out this is what I is much better for my mental health <laughs> if I go right this is this is the electronic strand of what I do. This is the more acoustic songwriting um, strand, and then there's the third strand, which is my piano compositions, which I've I've got ready to come out sometime soon. And if I stick with 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 that and and not try and mix them all up, which I always used to do in the past, and not and make it it was very eclectic mix, um, that helps me to to get you know get the work done, and and also you know people you know my wonderful fans you know I, I have to think of them too you know what they would like um so that that's that's helping me now yeah well I absolutely love what you do uh count me in one of those many many fans and uh, uh, uh thank you yeah and Howard uh congratulations on uh, on dialogue this is such a great next step I'm looking forward to eventually hearing that fourth one too so uh <laughs> oh thanks thanks thank you so much yeah, thank you yeah, for taking the time to talk about it today, and uh, we'll see hey, you around. Hey, it's a total pleasure speaking with you, and I really appreciate you doing the interview. I really do. Thank you. I also spoke with Howard uh, back in 2019. This is uh, this is when we were talking about the second record in a, a four-part series uh, that focused on uh, on where we are as a society and how we safely come out of the other side. Uh, in this interview, we hear about technology, both in the sense of how it helps and hurts us, as well as his love of it to progress his own music. We also hit back on some of his older albums as well, uh, Cross That Line from 1989, uh, Working in the Back Room from 94, and 2009's Ordinary Heroes as well. So let's do this one, part two, Kyle Meredith with Howard Jones. Hi, Kyle, it's Howard here, yeah. How are you? Let me congratulate you on Transform. What a fantastic record that uh, that you've got here. And um, yeah, as I read, so this is part two in a four-part series, right? Yes, that's right, yes. I set myself like a 10 year plan. <laughs> um, and the first, the first was uh, engaged, which was sort of like, you know, we need to stand up and get involved and, uh, and not be uh, bystanders. A transform is about taking responsibility for, for things oneself. So, you know, if you, if you want to change the world for the better, then we have to start with ourselves. So 
Um, that's what Transform's about. And then the um, next one is going to be Dialogue. And then the last one is going to be Global Citizen. A 10-year plan right there. That's uh, an yeah. interesting way to do it because I think a lot of artists would have probably just thrown this all on, on one record somehow and made you know a little epic out of it. But <laughs> but seeing that far ahead, do you feel like I mean does that um, does that take the weight off your shoulders of trying to come up with something or and also does it kind of lock you in place as to what you have to write towards now? Yeah, I mean it gives it it, it gives you a you know, and and also um, you know already I'm thinking about the next one and the one after that about you know how I'm going to do them and what form I'm going to take, and it just gives you a sort of sense of um, you know a journey that you're going on, and and that you know it's a it's a it's a it's an ambitious project that challenges me, you know to you know to keep working and 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 to keep focused. Well, it's it's obviously a very relevant uh, concept that you're you're tackling here, and and it might be an obvious answer, but but why did you pick this kind of concept? Um, well, you know, I I I, I think that I feel that you know, I want to make the, the the most valuable contribution to my world, really. And I'm a musician. I've been very fortunate to be in this position where I can make records and I can release them, and there are people who. You know, want to hear them. So I, I, I want to take that really seriously and and um, make sure that the work is 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 of value to people. You know, and it's inspirational and encouraging and thought provoking. And I think that's what art should do. You know, and you know, I'm taking that I'm taking that really seriously. So with Transform, do these hmm. musically do do they change for you? Uh, you know, so you've got the concept lyrically and thematically. Do, do, do you tackle yeah. that in the same way musically, album to album? Um, yeah, I mean, I like the, the idea of the music reflecting, you know, what the subject matter is. But, I mean, I can't really say how the music does that to transform. It, it's, just a, it's just a really good platform for the lyrics, you know. And, you know, songs like, you know, Beating Mr. Neg, which is, you know, about the, you know, the, the, the negative voice that sits on our shoulder and, and, and really wants to stop us doing you know what we're capable of and, and taking away our confidence and you know um I, I you know I really want to talk about those those things that affect everyone they certainly affect me and I'm sure they affect everyone else as well and um you know the the music is a is a you know a really good platform for you know for me to say those things yeah i I'll take some of the song titles here too because with a concept like this you could have gone dark and 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 we're all doomed kind of a thing but you know take us higher transform beating mr neg eagle will fly again i mean it, it feels like yeah. you've got some good optimism going on here well yeah i mean it is it it is my you know uh, my philosophy of life I, I i guess you know to be hopeful about the future it's absolutely no point in being doom and gloom about it because nothing is ever going to change and you know i i just believe that whatever problems and and difficulties that we face that uh, you know as human beings we can we have the resources to turn it around and and if, if we don't have a hopeful view of the future we'll never be able to have the energy and determination to do that you know i decided sort of long ago that that was going to be my you know my philosophy um i was going to believe that things could be better you know things can only get um, if we decide and it is a choice well, i love how you've written it in here in any way uh, and I, I fall in love with these songs so quick too i'll bring up one um one of the you know the uh, the pre-release singles here with the one to love you mm. S big fan right away of this yeah. one what i noticed though musically it's it's a very modern sound because if you hadn't told me this was a howard jones track and maybe you said this was the new washed out or toro y Moi or something like that i think i would have believed you and <laughs> well it was you know, i mean I mean, um, the one to love you was the first collaboration that I did with BT. So, you know, he brings his <laughs> massive skill set to that track, um, and you know, he's he's a, he's from a younger generation than me. You know, he's sort of a, 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 an electronic pioneer in his own right. And so, I've always been a huge fan of his. So that was just perfect collaboration, really, for us to work together. That that sounds, you know, in, in the past decade, you know, at least since you've started with this, with this, you know, new series and everything, you know, the, the synth sound has a, a very strong footing these days. Once again, in in every part of the thing, yeah. you know, and and I don't know, do you do yeah. you keep paying attention to that? Are you watching a lot of these artists that are citing you as influences? Um, 
I'd like to say that I, you know, I do, you know, huge amount of research, but I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really have time to do too much of that. I mean, I keep up with what's going on. You know, I listen to the radio. I, 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 I listen to Spotify. I listen to the new, new releases. I, I, but I also listen to classical music mm. <laughs> and, you know, um, choral music. And I really am just kind of doing doing what I do. And I think it's important to keep up with technology of our times and, and be able to use it and put the you know, effort into using. And then you kind of, by almost by accident, be, you know, sound more contemporary because you're using, you know, you're sort of kind of keeping up. I mean, I, I believe that technology has, has, has always driven um, music forward. You know, I mean, when you go right back to, you know, the harpsichord, which had no, you know, just like there was one, one volume, you know, each time you pressed a key. That, that evolving into the piano, you know, primitive pianos, which then again evolved. And as a result, musicians grabbed onto that and they created, uh, you know, amazing work as the technology um, developed. And I, I, I just feel that, you know, it's a principle that's been going on since, <laughs> you know, since people stretched a piece of string a, 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 <laughs> across a piece of wood. You know what I mean? It's like, it, I think technology has, has, has always driven things forward, and I, so I think it's important to use the technology of your of your time. And um, you know, it certainly is for me. You know, I mean, we're we're the first people to be able to use this, so we really should you know, embrace that. Yeah, well, it's, it, it is great how it kind of lines up like that. As you said, you know, using the technology kind of makes it sound mm-hmm. modern in in itself, but to sound so mm. in sync with what's happening, you know, in the in pop culture, I mm. guess. I mean, that's a nice mm. bit of luck. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I really, I mean, I mean no, just, I, it's, it was, it's certainly not intentional on my, I mean, I just do what's instinctively <laughs> right for me, you know. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't have a, a you know, a theory or a, or, a, or, a, or a practice that enables that to happen. I just, I, 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 I am a man. You know, I hope that I'm a man of my time. You know, and yeah. I, and sort of in the broader context, I, I sort of believe that you know, technology is going to be the thing that we can, if we use it, for, you know, in the right way, then we can solve the problems that the massive problems that we have got. You know, if we do, you know, I mean, you know, human beings are incredible at developing new techniques and solving problems. And, you know, if we put it to the right use, you know, we can, you know, technology can can, can save us from extinction. Is that interesting, though, because it used to be the sci- sci-fi writers who would uh, who would warn us about technology, you know, in sort of a way that uh, – it was going to be the doom, and and I think we see that, and I'm sure you probably see that as well. As we get sucked into social media on our phone, and all of our heads are down, you know, that's that's the one way. Yeah. But uh, but to try to yeah. find that right way to, to make it save us, I, I'm yeah. on board with you on with that. Yeah, everything has its 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 sort of negative aspect. Technology can be used to to make nuclear bombs, or it can be used to you know power the world, and and it's all it's our choice. You know, it's always going to be our choice. So. so so which way do we, you know do we want to go? Nothing in itself is uh, you know is intrinsically bad. Um, it's just our choices as to how we use it. You know, are we going to use it for the benefit of everyone, or are we going to use it to you know dominate others? You know, it's those choices that 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 and uh, and you know I kind of you know that's what Transformers about. You know, it's about choosing the hopeful positive outcome and not succumbing to you know, negativity and, and doom and gloom. In, uh, somewhat interestingly, you just came off of an acoustic tour, right? Yeah, yes. So here right, we are yes. stripping that technology of, <laughs> of, of, of all of these songs. But it says a lot about these songs still hold up beyond the electronics that they're known for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I am sort of, you know, my, my big, my great love is, is you know, is songwriting and, and structure and chord changes, you know, transitions into other sections, surprises. That is my absolute passion, you know, sort of probably even more than the sort of, you know, synth side of it, really. It's how songs work and how how chord changes make you feel and, you know, transitions into, into other, other sections. This is, you know, this is my passion. Do you ever feel like it gets uh, weighted down, like that you have to speak towards a certain sound because of what you're known for? No, um, I don't really. I mean, 
I mean, I, I, I knew that the fans wanted me to make a, uh, another synth record because they make, they kind of made, you know, in, in, in the, because I've got really nice fans, <laughs> you know, don't give me a hard time. Um, but I felt this sort of, um, sort of gentle encouragement <laughs> to make, to make a full on synth record again. And I was really in the mood for doing that, you know, so those two things coincided um, well. But I mean, I can only really do what I do. You know, I, I'm Howard Jones and I, I make my music the way I make it I I can't really um, contrive beyond that anyway you know it's um, it's not possible and thank goodness by the way uh, I'll say as a fan <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to wrap up here with a, a bit of a lightning round if yeah. you're up for it because uh, three of your yeah, records sure. celebrates uh, big round anniversaries this year and uh, I don't know mm-hmm. just kind of get a quick thought what comes to mind you know when we bring some of these up if you're if you're good with it yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll, sure. we'll start with the 30th anniversary because Cross the Line, you know, released in uh, 1989 mm. and uh, gave us yeah. everlasting love and The Prisoner. What's the takeaway these days mm. with that record for you? Well, those two tracks you mentioned, uh, you know, I still play a lot out live and I, I, I just, I think that's a couple of my best tracks. You know, I, I worked with um, Chris Hughes, who, who is a really good friend of mine, who who produced those two tracks and he, you know, he worked with Tears for Fears and, you know, the, the, those amazing re- records with them. I'd always wanted to work with Chris. So, and I got to work with him on those two tracks. So, so, and they, they, they really, you know, they just, they just stand up really, really well today. You know, it was me experimenting with a few things, you know, brass sections and brass arrangements. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I you know, my career has been, you know, trying new things and, and trying to evolve as a as as an artist, as a musician, as an arranger, uh, working with groups of people, other groups of people, and uh, you know, I think Cross That Line was a good example of that. And then you head into 1994 with uh, working in the back room. Mm. This was your first self-released one, right? Right on Detox, and yeah. you went on to sell yeah. over 20,000 on your own pre-internet. This was before you could get on there and mm. really market that way. I mean, that's this record mm. had to be a big moment mm. for you. Well, I'd done my five albums for for Warner Brothers, which was was the contract, and they didn't want to give me a new deal, which was a bit of a shock, really. And I, I kind of devastated for about six weeks um, when they when they didn't want to renew the contract. But then I suddenly realised it was my chance to really carve out my own you know destiny and and career and do everything independently. You know, the internet was just emerging at that time and. You know, we started doing. You know, we started. You know, booking tours ourselves and making the albums ourselves, and just just taking the reins of everything. And I, to be honest, I've really, really enjoyed that. That has been like the best thing that happened to me in a way because um, it's really brought out all kinds of sides of my character that I didn't really know was there, and you know, it's helped me develop as a person. So, you know, I mean, being in the driving seat, you know, of your career and your and your work. It's fun, actually. You know, it's it's difficult. It's difficult and hard, and you have to work much harder. But you know, you really feel like it's yours. You know, you, this is what you've done. This is what you've created. And you know, there's a great feeling of fulfillment that comes with that. It says uh, so much too, because especially in that era, you know, around '94 in the '90s, when when major label meant everything, mm. when when artists would get dropped, yeah. it would almost be like they felt like it was the end of their career. I mean, so many. If they didn't hang yeah. it up forever, they hung it up for a long time, you know, and, and for you just yeah. to kind of pull yeah. through that and, and produce such a great piece of work, like working in the back room. I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. huge. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, it was really it was, you know, very quickly as a response, really, I guess. So, right. I'm not going to be put off by this. And I, I didn't even record it onto multitrack. You know, it was it was all it was all coming out of the of the Mac SE and was mixed down to stereo and that's it i can never go back and 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 remix those tracks it was very much of the moment this is what i'm into at the moment and and there's a kind of energy there that that in in that record i think that that it you know really reflects where i was i was i I was i was just getting my fighting spirit was coming out you know (laughs) i'm not this isn't going to stop me from doing what i do well, that brings us to uh, Ordinary Heroes that turns uh, 10 this year as well. And this was a very different record, right? I mean, this is a very quiet record for you. Yeah. I wanted to just focus on a simple lineup, you know, of like, you know, piano, vocal, backing vocal arrangements, guitar, string quartet, and bass, and drums, and stick to that plan. 
and really, you know, because you actually have to work, I think you have to work harder to create interest when you've just limit yourself to, to those few instruments. And um, I really, really enjoyed that. And it's, it's, it is a very special record for me. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I know it's got no synths on it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm still really proud of it as a as a you know piece of song you know songwriting. Um, yeah, you know, Howard Jones, a songwriter, you know, singer songwriter. No, it's it is a great point in the catalog, and and again, just goes to prove, much like the acoustic tour, you know, what you can do beyond mm-hmm. the I guess the expectations. You know, that's you know, I mean, I really enjoyed doing those acoustic tours because because basically it's very straightforward. I you know I I can play the piano until. I mean, I don't even hardly have to think about it because I've been playing it since I was seven. You know, it's like walking and breathing. So I don't, you know, it's, very, it's just really enjoyable. And then this tour I'm doing now is an absolute nightmare of, of, of technology, technology and complexity and so many things that can go wrong, so many things that have to be addressed and thing, new things you have to learn. I don't know why I keep doing that to myself, but I guess, when you hear it, you know, in its finished form, it's like it is very, very, you know, it's very exciting, uh, and you know, and it is feels like a hell of an achievement. So, and also, you know, you 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 are you really are using the you know the technology of the day, and you're you know you're taking a risk. And whereas you know when I'm doing the acoustic shows, it's not so much of a risk for me. You know, it, it's really kind of fun and and enjoyable. The electronic stuff is like wow, you know, I've got to really get my head down and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> get way through the problems. <laughs> now, now, is this new tour? Is it is it like the multimedia side of things as well? Is are you working all that in? Yeah, we've you know constructed a ho- whole set of visuals that go with everything that you know have been you know really carefully sought out, and you know there's there's contemporary dance in there. There's in fact there's lots of people in the in the videos. It's not it's not like sort of abstract um, art. It's 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 it, it's it's very sort of human human based, and we've you know done a lot of filming, and yeah, I I, I I've tried to make it complementary to the show because well I I've found that when I go to shows where and I've I'm I've been guilty of this as well where it's basically a video through the whole show and it's totally distracting and you know it sort of takes you away from the actual what's happening. You've got an artist in front of you, and so what we try to do is is sometimes there's nothing on the screen and there's just one element that will be, you know, relevant to what I'm singing about. And um, we've really tried to be careful about that this time. So, you know, it's all learning, you know, learning process, trying to get it better all the time. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what that uh, what that looks like and, and sounds like with this. Yeah. Howard yeah. Jones, thank you once again. Congratulations on Transform and this whole big mm-hmm. epic that you're working on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope I survive. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 thanks very much, Kyle. It's been really great speaking with you, really great. Same here, uh, definitely an, an honor. Uh, take care, and we'll see you out on the road. All okay, right. thank you. All the best. Bye now, bye, bye. And my thanks to Howard Jones. Again, the new record is called Dialogue. Uh, big thanks to you as well for checking out the episode. Hit that subscribe button before you get out of here so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at all the usual spots that you can po- procure your podcast. That also includes uh, YouTube for the video versions. After that, head over to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. An hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. That's Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three of them, at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Oh, great. No, great. Fantastic. That's great. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media.